My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're going to talk about um, flow velocities, camshafts, and variable duration camshafts. Basically, the holy grail of camshafts. Having variable camshafts is like having um, uh, variable timing, which is your advance and retard of your timing. We'll go through all that. It's like having fuel injection, the fact that it's variable in any kind of uh, situation or position. Almost like, uh, also like CVTs, where they can vary the gear ratios. They're not fixed to six steps. They can vary on a nice curve in between there. So they can have fourth and a half gear, or 4.36 gears, or you know what I mean? There's, there's variance in there. So to explain this, what we're going to do is we're going to look at two different part. We've got two different profiles. All of these variable valve jobbies, like the shift cam, like VTEC, like all these other ones, they say they're variable, but they're not, right? That's just marketing wank. It's basically a two stage, it's a two phase, right? You have slow cam and you have fast cam. Now the cam speed isn't what it's about. We're gonna go into what it's about, but basically you just have a two stage. It's just for slow speed and high speed. In a sense, it is like having two gears. If you had a bike that had just one gear, it's just, well, it's not even a gear, it's just transferring the power to the wheel. You just have a one state. Just like a, a BMX, you have one state. And then if you have just put another sprocket and you know a derailleur and all that shit, or however your arrangement is, you've now got two speeds. You've now got a gear for slow speeds. It's quite a tall gear, so you can set off. So there's a lot of RPM, but not much torque at the rear wheel. Um, oh no, sorry, the other way around. There's a lot of RPM, which convert, gets converted into a lot of torque. So basically the, your engine or your wheels is going fast, but your rear wheel is going slow, so you multiply the torque. And then when you, once you've gained momentum and all the rest of it, and you're kicking on, now you stick it into another gear, so you can basically reduce the RPM, reduce the torque, but increase the speed of your rear wheel. All good. Right, so what we need to understand is exactly how this works. Why is there this twin speed jobby? So basically what you have is you have a port and you have your cylinder. Obviously it's not blanked off at the bottom of your tip. And then you have a piston in here. Just like that. Right, so what's happening is, is the piston is on the intake stroke. We'll ignore the valve for the time being. The piston is on the way down. Now what happens is this is at slow RPM. So let's just say this is at 3000 RPM. Right, this is at 3000 RPM. And what we're going to do is this is like racing between the lights, right? This is the track. This is um, this is our stop. So our piston. We can't go any further than our stop. Obviously, our piston is physically the bottom of our cylinder, and the air starts to set off. And the arrows, the length of the arrows, is the speed of this. So the piston descends, but the piston descending isn't that quick, and it's all volume based. So we're increasing our volume in our cylinder at a slow rate compared to what the engine can do at 3000 RPM. And the air starts to fill, and then what happens is, is the air comes in like this, and these, this air stops dead like so. Which means it's like, now we put the traffic lights on, you start to flow, and now you're back on the traffic lights and you're slowing down. So that means this air has to stop, and this air eventually has to stop, and this air eventually has to stop. Because it's piling into its own air. And the problem is with camshafts is if you just have one speed of camshaft, they have basically openings. Um, well, forget overlap. Let's just say our cam opens at zero degrees of crank rotation. We get to 180 degrees like this. But our cam, our single profile cam, closes at just, say, uh, 60 degrees after bottom dead centre. Bottom dead centre, you muppet. 60 degrees. The reason why is because we know that bikes usually hold, you know, you, you don't truck around at 3000 RPM, you give it some beans because the engine can. And that is beneficial for making maximum torque, maximum power. It's also good for selling bikes because, yeah, it goes like fuck. So they have a fixed single cam that basically closes at 60 degrees after top bed centre. We'll get to why they do that in a minute. But basically, what happens is, is now our piston basically gets to bottom dead center. We'll say that line there is 60 degrees. That's 60 degrees after bottom dead center. Down here is the line that's bottom dead center. That's where the piston crown gets to bottom dead center. So the piston is now on its way up. 
Now all this air that's come in, once we got to bottom dead centre, the air is pretty much slow. And then when we're on we're our way back up, we are literally, we haven't closed our valve yet. And all this air, not all of it, but some of the air pisses back out because she's stopped. And now we can start forcing it back out. This reduces volumetric efficiency, which means our torque drops out because our volumetric efficiency, our thermal efficiency is directly linked to how much torque because everything else is fixed. Our bore and our stroke are fixed. So if we do not fill our cylinder completely and we start pissing some of it back out and let's just say we piss out 15%, then our volumetric efficiency is 85%, which is crap. That's our VE, right? Our volumetric efficiency is crap, which means our torque production is going to be crap. This is what we mean by low end torque. Now, the problem is with everything in the world is it's a compromise because if we have low end torque, we have shit top end power. And if we have high power, we generally have shit low end torque. What happens in this scenario when we speed the engine up? If we speed the engine up, our piston has got a fucking move on now because our piston speed is related to our crank RPM. If you double the piston, if you double the RPM, then you're going to double your piston speed. So our piston is basically, so our piston is flying down now. And what happens is, is our air is drawn in like this, big fucking arrows like this, right? Massive long arrows like that. We're really getting a kick on. And the piston in a sense is running away from the air. So the air's coming in, but the piston's going faster. So the air is, the piston's got a lead on us, which means that we've always got lower pressure in our cylinder, which is great because that entices more air to expand into that cylinder. Absolutely fantastic. Now we're up here, if we get to bottom dead centre, so we're bottom dead centre here, what happens is, is the air's still got a move on, the air flooding in because it's trying to change that, chase that piston. So in a sense, what's happened is, is that the piston's sped along like this, the air's trying to catch up when it reaches bottom dead centre. Now we reach bottom dead centre and on our way back, the air finally starts to meet it. And that in a sense is where we close our cam at 60 degrees after bottom dead centre. Bottom dead, uh, bottom dead centre, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so basically that's what's happening is that piston comes down, the air's trying to get in, the piston comes back up a bit and the air comes to meet it and then you close your valve. Now, that's what we'd love to do. We'd love to be able to control when our valves open and close. We would love our valves to basically be variable. We'd love variable opening um, or just basically change our duration. We can basically, if we can have our clam, cam close earlier. So, our slow speed cam, a slow speed cam would be like this with quite a short duration. If you do angles like this, that duration there, just for simplicity, that's near, let's just say that's 80 degrees, right? Then this is for slow speed, right? Then for high speed, what we want is we want a long duration cam. So if we go from when the cam opens there towards the center, oh, not even further than that. And then let's just say that's 120 degrees. And this is for high speed. So this is why these cams have basically two speeds, right? They have high speed and they have low speed. And that's basically what all these VTEC systems and all the rest of it. And this is why they always change at a certain RPM. Your VTEC, I can't what it is, it's like five and a half thousand or something like that. That's when it changes. So if you have two cams, basically what you've got is you've got two stages. The Merlin engine from the Spitfire used to have a two stage um, supercharger, similar kind of thing. Uh, I, I even think the dick and the balls, I can't find the exact numbers, but that has a twin stage um, supercharger because at low speed you want to kind of hurry the air up, at high speed, well you still want to do that, but there are twin speeds where basically you have the best results for both. In a sense this is exactly like gears, you know, for gearboxes you have a speed for every single RPM, uh, you have an RPM range with a power band in it and you want to kind of keep that engine within that power band because it's the most efficient. Volumetric efficiency is the highest and that's where you basically want to sit. So your gearbox basically just sits you there. 